All right. Pool cover. Now, I had a problem with my little splash about. I, I refuse to call my pool a splash about. Okay. If you can go into your pool and at no point, you know, is there a place where you can just have your, your feet t- are touching the bottom and your head is still well out of the water, you, you do not have a pool. You have an in ground, above ground pool. Um, all right. Dear Billy Sunspot, <laughs> I have a solar pool cover as well. Or should I say had? I had the same problem you did. I left it out and it got ruined. I didn't know it'd be like having a pet that required that much maintenance. I started asking questions to my brother-in-law who works at a tech company that dabbles in solar power. He basically told me that solar technology in general is where computers were in the 70s, except that people think it's as good as computers are now. He suggested getting aluminum or some other metal to cover the pool, some heavy duty gloves so I don't burn my hands, oh, so you don't burn your hands when moving it. He said essentially it's the same thing. This was dis- disheartening. Sincerely, guy with small balls in cold pool. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll get it there. I mean, look what they've done with getting fucked up. You know? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm done with alcohol forever. I told my wife, like, uh, if we ever go back to France, like I might come up, but then I just don't want to go through having taken me fucking six years to quit again. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm in a really good place here, despite you know my last podcast. I am. I'm just just going through some shit here, so I need I need to fucking do this, and I'm going to, and it's really going to benefit my kids. And now I actually kind of realize why subconsciously maybe I waited so long to have kids so I just really needed to pull the handbrake on the runaway freight train of dysfunction of you know and I'm not just coming down on my family tree just like in general just generally speaking you know the fallout of everybody trying to fix you know shit you got to understand it first so now that I do I just feel like uh you know I'll be a way better parent, hopefully. All right, Malibu deck collapse. What's up, you freckled freak? <laughs> Please do a story on the Malibu deck collapse. I didn't see that. The news coverage is fucking hysterical. The interviews of the pain and suffering they endured is beyond imaginable. How they fell the mind-blowing 15 feet to the jagged rock. I didn't hear about this. Jagged rocks below... Uh, with wine get glasses and caviar without dying is beyond me. Oh my God. The news coverage shows them limping to where Mercedes and BMW and BMWs. I almost pissed my pants. I sure hope they get the support they need to rebuild their $50,000 deck on their $30 million home. Well, haven't you ever heard that saying that your health is everything? Um, now I, I know I seem like I'm rich shaming, but I'm old school and don't give a fuck. All right, I I can go with that. I was born in the 70s and grew up talking, uh, taking ass whooping, whooping from bullies while the teachers laughed when America wasn't full of snatch face sissies. Um, Or maybe you're just still hurt from all of that. And this is the protective place you're still in. I mean, don't you wish somebody helped you out back then? So when... Or if you're saying there's been an overcorrection. Um, I don't even think there's an overcorrection in caring. I just think that there's a select group of fucking sociopaths, white women, that are, 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 tr- are grabbing the steering wheel of this and really ignoring people of color and all of that. And they're making it about themselves and it's a power grab. That's really kind of what's going on here, I think. Uh, Check out the videos on YouTube and carry on. I saw your show at Madison Square Garden two years ago on mushrooms with my wife. Nice. And she's been hooked ever since. To mushrooms or to my act? Dude, you see anything on mushrooms, you're going to be like, dude, I I fucking like this. This is good shit. Um, All right. Ketamine. Ketamine. Greetings and love you, freckled fuck. As someone who has self-healed from a childhood of abuse slash neglect, who has been a bit timid about trying shrooms and shit, 
I high, highly recommend... Wait a minute. This guy spelled ketamine, K-E-T-O-M-I-N-E. Then, then he or she spells it K-O-T-M-I-N-E and M-D-M-A. M-D-M-A is a safer version of ecstasy. M-D-A is not cut for parties with random shit. Yeah, dude, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going into that world. You know what the first song I heard, I just thought of, was the part where Madonna's moaning in that song, uh, "Smack my bitch up." Like all of a sudden, I'll just be in that thing, and she's in the background. I just hear her voice. Ah! <laughs> or was that Robert Plant? Um, I live in o- Oakland slash San Francisco, and ketamine slash shrooms have been decriminalized for therapy. Wow. Can you imagine if this shit actually works? What if it actually fucking works and you could, like, cure people at the very least of the pain that happened to them? And then what if you could then give it to people that have inflicted pain and then they could fucking cure whatever made them, the pain that happened to them that made them hurt other people? Then how would they try and separate us? Then how could they pit us against each other? Um, when mushrooms take half a day, where mushrooms take half a day, I think is what you want to say, a dose of K will get you back to life in 30 hours? Dude, did you write this while high on this shit? When mushrooms take half a day, okay, that'd be 12 hours, a dose of K will get you back to life in 30 hours. Did you mean a third of an hour? But you feel like you died and came back squeaky clean. A nice fondle of the chakras, man. Um, I was tossed to the street at night by my mother at 10 years old for calling my father upset due to my stepfather's drunken destruction. Oh, and she chose him. My stepfather was molested and took it all out on me growing up. I didn't know the molestation until I was an adult, but shit was fucked. A poor, fucked-up, red-headed stepchild from from Vermont. So I relate to your New England ashy, bald, ginger fuck soul. Um, Nothing has helped me like a week with K and MDMA. I like how you've gotten in touch with your chakras, but still, if you're going to say that you relate to me as another man, I'm assuming you're straight, that you then have to call me a fucking ashy, bald, ginger fuck soul so it doesn't seem too gay. Um, I let some hippies take me to Burning Man, which is an amazing art show, totally better than my sarcastic non-New Age mind thought it would be. Jesus Christ, did I write this shit? You sound like me. I was dosed and finally broke down, cried, spent the week on a bike just pedaling and letting go of childhood drama. That sounds great. I tried DMT once, and every time I see a mosque, I see what started out, started most of our cultures. Uh, The word... DMT brings you, the world DMT brings you is exactly what the ceiling of the mosque looked like. Religion is sober people trying to recreate one person's heavy drug fueled weekend. Wow. Religion is sober people trying to recreate one person's heavy drug fueled weekend. That's pretty fucking wild. All right. Cheated on fiance with bottle service girl. Oh, boy. Come on, guys. I'm not a therapist. You're going too deep here. Bill, a little over a month ago, I I went on a bachelor trip, and I hooked up with the bottle service girl that worked our VIP booth. It's a wild story that I'd love to tell every detail, but long story short, the bottle service girl found out I was engaged after Google searching my name the day after we hooked up. I played at a big D1 college and had a... I don't want to read all your details... Uh, I don't have Facebook or I don't have any social medias, but now I've learned to never underestimate the investigative work of a group of girls at brunch drinking bottomless mimosas. And yes, of course, I would have given her a fake name, but it was my credit card. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is like, this is like a a VIP booth and I had to give her my driver's license to verify the transaction. Anyway, she found my fiance's Instagram and told her everything that happened before I even boarded my connecting flight home. 
I was picked up from the airport and immediately confronted by my fiance. Literally, I was busted four hours after the bottle service girl dropped me off at the airport. I deleted everything on my phone except I didn't clear my Google search, to which my fiance finds how long until Molly kicks in. Oh, boy. Uh, If anyone's interested, about 30 minutes. (laughs) And Google is just kicking my ass left and right. I have never taken Molly before and some life advice for your listeners. If you're trying to stay faithful to your significant other, it's the last drug you should ever take. Me and my fiance are still together, but my life has been turned upside down. Everything I do is under a microscope, and this is something I never, I've never put up with, with other relationships, and I'm really struggling with it. The bachelor trip I went on was not mine, but my fiance is telling me that I can't have my own bachelor trip. Well, it sounds like you already had one, dude. I know that trust is gone and it's going to take years to gain it back, but I don't think I can set a precedent of giving up this much leverage in the relationship because I made one mistake. We're going to couples counseling twice a week and it's really helped clear the air and get something back on track, but it's been very one-sided. Yeah, well, dude, you gotta, you gotta, uh, I don't know, you're coming off a little selfish here. If you did what you did, you know, I don't know, dude. My gut's telling me you shouldn't get married. Um, anyways, because you haven't said that you really love this woman at all. Uh, for example, I've confided in several of my best friends that were on the trip through text messages. And of course, I delete them because it's a conversation I wouldn't want her to see. It's bro talk that would undoubtedly be taken out of context and start a fight. Oh, boy, buddy. My fiance goes through my phone and sees that I'm deleting texts and tells my counsel- our counselor about, it. yeah, dude, this relationship is over. Um, so I was basically told that I can't delete texts and I have to be transparent if I want this to work. And our counselor agreed. Uh, yeah. Prior to my cheating, she never went through my phone at all. So this is uncharted waters for me. I'm walking on eggshells and it fucking sucks. She wants me to cut ties with the majority of my best friends that that we're on the trip, and that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's over. I love my fiance. Okay, it's here. I want to marry her, and I want to be with her for the rest of my life. She's an incredible, beautiful woman, and I wish I could take back what I did. I made the mistake, and I'm the reason I am in this situation. All right, you're taking accountability here, but I don't think I can be too much of a pushover in the in this process. I know I have to give in a bit here, but I feel like I have to draw a line at some point. Should I give up my bachelor trip because it's what she wants? Yeah, dude, I think you have to you have to say I already had mine. Um, or do you have any advice for me to make a bachelor trip happen with my best friend that she now hates? Yeah, dude, I, I just I don't see this relationship working. Um I think you're sad that you did what you did. I think you feel bad that you hurt her, but I also think that you probably equally feel bad for yourself. So, um, I don't know. And then you're texting. What are you texting? Dude, you see the tits on that chick? I mean, if that's what you're texting during all of this, um, I think you getting caught might have saved you a lot of money. Um, and kids that will fucking resent you or whatever. I, I, I just don't think you should. I don't think you should get married. Um, I think your only play here is just to say, look, how long are you going to fucking, I know I put myself in this situation, but like you totally don't trust me. You're going through my phone and this is, this level of control is going to drive me crazy after a while. But then you also already fucked up by having to delete text. So she, once again, you've broken the trust with her again. It's over, dude. It's a wrap. Either you put your balls in her purse or you fucking walk. So either get used to this. And uh, not have a bachelor party. The fact that you still think you deserve one is pretty fucked up. I got to be honest with you. So I don't think you're at the level of maturity or maybe with the right person yet to get married. So if I was you, uh, I'm leaning. I would say get the fuck out now because it's not going to get any better. All right. Should I get a prenup? Dear Billy the Bull Burr. I'm a 27-year-old entrepreneur, and I'm engaged. My fiance is 21. We've been dating for almost one and a half years. I met her when she was 17. She's only 17. Uh, when I was working in, minim- in a minimum wage job trying to start up a business, I was kind of friend zone, but then perhaps that was because she was in high school. Uh, 
All right. Well, wait a second. You were 27. Weren't you friend zone because you were 10 years older than her? Because you was old as Jim Morrison when he died and she was still fucking, uh, <laughs> still had a book bag. All right. When I met her, well, I don't know. When I met her, I, I made about $12,000 per, $12, per year and lived with my parents. But after starting my business, I made one hundred sixty grand in my first year and one hundred eighty grand in my second year. The business is just opening up two more locations in 2022 and continue to expanding after that. We didn't start dating until after I was making money. Uh, yeah, she was also a kid, dude, when you met her. So I see where you're going with this, but she was a fucking... I mean, 17 is ga ga go go ga. Uh, my parents insist that I'm crazy if I don't get a prenuptial, prenuptial agreement as an argument could be made that my company is very valuable. And when I brought this up to her, she felt very insulted, like I was indicating she was only in it for the money. Yeah, that's the thing with prenups. There's no way to bring it up where they're not going to get pissed. I said, I don't think that. It's just to appease my parents. Ah, that was a stupid thing to say. Then she thought I was saying my parents don't trust her. See, now you're into that. She'd probably sign it if I forced her but would resent me for it. A little history on my girl. She was physically abused as a child, and the father eventually left the family. She had a very long sexual history before meeting me. I thought she met her at 17. Dude, these, these fucking emails are too deep. This is above my pay grade, people. And according to her, I was the first person she told about her sexual history in depth and one of, the, one of only a few to know about the abuse. Um, all right, so she trusts you. That's a good thing. Since we've been together, she hasn't, if she's telling the truth, because I don't know any of these people in this story. I don't know you. Since we've been together, she hasn't given me any reason to doubt her. I'd say, doubt her. I'd say her behavior is the opposite of gold digging. She encourages me not to spend money on her as she says she doesn't deserve someone like me. Um, I can see my parent, brothers, and extended family's perspective, but they don't know her like I know her. And it seems wrong to say, hey, I love you, and want to spend the rest of my life with you. But just in case you're planning on running off my money, sign this. Any advice would be appreciated. Um, oh, Jesus. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is like one of the things that they don't talk about in the current narrative. Where how um, where as a man, how you're, you're just always viewed as the predator. But the thing is. When you become rich and successful, you become prey. You do. And there's way more women that will now have a conversation with you because of where you're at, the car you're driving, and the clothes you're wearing. Now, I understand their argument was like, well, I'm not going to hitch my wagon to some fucking loser. But, the, you know, the same way guys will marry for looks, some guys will do that. Some people, women will marry for the lifestyle. So... This is something that you're going to have to try and figure out. Yeah, there's prenups. There's fucking, I don't know what else is there, trust. She's pretty young, dude. I would be nervous that, like, wait, you're 10 years older, so she's 21, so you're 31. You got this crazy fucking business going. And she's going to marry into that. And she's 21 years old. She could hang with you for five years, let that shit blow up. And she still has the rest of her fucking 20s to take that money and then try to go out and find love. Yeah, I mean, I can see why your parents are putting that paranoid shit in your head. Um, but I'm not going to tell you what to do here, dude. This this is way too complex. All right. Um All right, ladies, you know what? Can any ladies out there, ladies, how, how does a guy in that situation know? What is, and, and be brutally honest. Because, you know, I was joking about this. I did Conan last week. There's like women out here that can tell instantly if the Ferrari is yours, if you rented or rented it. There's a sticker somewhere. They, they just look and they know like, oh, he's just, he doesn't have Ferrari money. If they see you without that sticker, then they're like, ah, oh. you know, and then they move on, right? 
to the guy who actually has the Ferrari. So there is that element out there. Is this person that? I have no idea. There's no way for me to tell. So somebody out there, uh, ladies, can you read from your playbook a little bit? How can this guy um, tell if this, this woman's being honest with them? I mean, those are some good signs. You know, don't don't buy me anything. I don't fucking deserve it, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think that's fucking trauma from her childhood, which, you know, if you get abused like that, you feel fucking worthless. I don't know. I don't fucking know, guys. Come on. Let's just, let's try to keep it light here. All right. But ladies, write in. Let me know. Okay. Let this guy know. He's in a critical point here. Okay. That's the podcast. Go Bruins. Go Celtics. Go Red Sox. Go fuck yourselves. And I will check in on you on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.